It was a rough weekend of news for Mets fans, plus we had a prospect call up. Let's talk about it next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Monday, July 19th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White, and we had terrible news again. Jacob deGrom placed on the IL retroactive to July 15th with tightness in his right forearm. He's dealt with a couple of different things this year, but you know when deGrom is healthy, he's pitched like a historic starting pitcher. Not much to do there, but you probably need some replacements at starting pitcher, Scott. So I'm going to throw a few names your way. John uh, Jamison Tyone was up against the Red Sox on Sunday, five and a third shutout with three strikeouts. Chris Flexen had a nice start this weekend, seven innings, one run. John Gray, another really nice start, seven innings, two runs, seven strikeouts. And Kwang Hyun Kim was up against the Giants, six shutout with one strikeout. How would you rank those four? Tyone, Flexen, Gray, and Kim. I think John Gray's the clear standout here. He's been a different pitcher since coming back from injury. All five of the starts have been great, including two at home and Coors Field, this most recent one at home. Just missing a lot more bats. The stuff looks livelier. He looks as good as John Gray's ever looked. So he's number one. Jamison Tyone has put together three good starts in a row, and I, I've liked the improvement in his fastball all season long. I thought better things were coming. So he'd be number two. Flex in a distant third. Don't see a lot of potential there but he is he is on a nice run if nothing else and then Kwang Kwang Hyun Kim would be a distant fourth all right let's look at another group of starting pitchers these are all rostered between 30 percent and 60 percent of CBS leagues so a little bit deeper uh formats here Alex Cobb up against the Mariners this weekend six and two thirds one run six strikeouts Madison Bumgarner made his return to the mound six innings two runs six strikeouts Zach Thompson someone I know you do like quite a bit Scott <laughs> Tyler McGill made another start for the Mets he was at the Pirates six shutout with two strikeouts and then Willie Peralta that's right that Willie Peralta he's back in the bigs he pitches for the Detroit Tigers now seven shutout with four strikeouts Scott who is your one or two favorites from this group Cobb Mad Bum, Thompson, McGill, and Peralta. Well, Zach Thompson is my favorite. He's been a great bat misser since coming up from the minors. And um, I, I think I think the breakthrough is legitimate. He kind of came out of nowhere. He's 27 years old, but I think it's legit. Uh, he'd be number one. And I, I'd take him over Chris Flexen on the previous list, as a matter of fact. I'd also take Alex Cobb over Flexen. Cobb's underlying numbers have looked great all year. He's been getting strikeouts. A lot of ground balls, that splitter. It's it's always been a fantastic pitch for him, but it, it's gone to another level this year. And uh, four of his past five starts, we've really seen the results turn around and start to live up to those expected stats that have looked great all year. So Alex, Alex Cobb would be number two for me. The other big news this weekend regarding the Mets was Francisco Lindor, who went to the IL with a grade two oblique strain, expected to miss somewhere between four and six weeks. And you need to replace him as well. Some that might be available in shallower leagues. These are between 60 and 75% of CBS leagues. Uh, Willie Adamas, David Fletcher, and Luis Arias. Scott, how are you ranking those three potential Lindor replacements? I'm going, going Willie Adamas, number one. Just getting out of Tropicana Field has been a huge benefit to him. He had always hit poorly there in his career. That's, of course, where what he used to call home when he played for the Rays. Didn't like the batter's eye, and it showed in the numbers. Since joining the Brewers, though, the power's gone up, the strikeouts have gone down. He looks like close to a must-star player, frankly, and he's he's been on a nice roll here since the start of the second half. David Fletcher, meanwhile, he's batting about 450 since mid-June. He's gotten his season-long batting average up near 320, which is closer to where we thought it'd be all along. Not much to go along with the batting average. He is batting leadoff for the Angels, so there, there's... Getting, getting some runs scored at least, but not a lot of power, not a lot of speed. Still, Fletcher uh, just being a reliable source of batting average. I think he's number two on the list. Luis Arias is third. Um, just kind of average across the board. All right. The big prospect that we had called up on Sunday was Brandon Marsh, an outfield prospect for the Los Angeles Angels. He's known for his hit and his speed tools. Does offer a little bit of pop as well. He's played 120 games between AA and AAA. And between those two levels, 10 homers and 20 steals. He was hot as of late in July as well. 13, actually, no, I think it's up to 16% rostered now for Brandon Marsh. Scott, 
What do you like about the skill set, and what leagues would you be looking to add Brandon Martian? Maybe f- some five outfielder leagues. I don't think he's an automatic add even in those. I spent 2.7% of my fab budget to win him in Tau Wars. That's a five outfielder league with a 15 team, five outfielder league. So it's not like there was a lot of competition for his services. He, he is considered a good prospect, but a lot of it's just because of the athleticism, uh, the ability to play defense, the raw speed that hasn't really translated to a lot of stolen bases in the minors. Maybe he'll be of help there. Hard to say. I think the hit tool is pretty good. The power is the big question for Brandon Marsh. He has shown it at times. I think he's capable of being a power hitter. But is it going to manifest in his first stint in the majors? I would bet against it. But it's more of it, it's more of a wait and see thing. Let's let's see how Marsh performs, and then we can talk about adding him. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.